So instrument of the study or the data collection. So this is one of the processes that uh, you need to consider when it comes to gathering the data for your research study. So it's very important that you need to identify what type of instrument that you will be needing based on your objectives and research question or statement of the problem. Because it's very important the instrument that you will be needing to use when you gather your research data should answer your statement of the problem. So these things are all connected. Okay. Lesson objectives at the end of the lesson, the students can compare the different types of data gathering and design the instrument of the study. Right, so most of the frequently used data collection techniques. Okay, first is documentary analysis. Documentary analysis, document analysis, is a type of qualitative research in which documents are reviewed by the analyst to assess an, an appraisal theme. Dissecting documents involves coding content into subjects like how focus group or interview transcripts are investigated. Okay, itong documentary analysis, um, this type of research is that you'll be needing corpora for your study. So meaning you're going to analyze a content which is um, indicated in documents. So it depends what kind of document that you'll be needing based on your study. So basically you will um, analyze papers or reports, um, records, for your study. So this is documentary analysis. Okay, these are the three essential source of documents. We have public records, personal documents, and physical evidence. We see public records, such as understudy transcripts, statements of purpose, yearly reports, strategy, uh, strategy manuals, understudy handbooks, and vital arrangements. So um, public records could be in various forms. So meron siyang reports, um, meron siyang manuals, handbooks, or communication letters. Um, it depends what, uh, what kind of records that you'll be needing for your study. You also have personal documents such as date books, messages, scrapbooks, online journals, Facebook posts, obligation logs, occurrence reports, reflections, diaries, and daily papers. In personal um, documents, um, it could also be yung mga tweets ng isang uh, personality. So it depends. See, personal documents, it's a list of um, written compositions produced by a person. We also have physical evidence such as flyers, publications, plans, handbooks, and training materials. It could also be um, newspapers or research articles. Siya. So basically, itong documentary analysis, it's a content analysis. I remember um, one group in Practical Research One last year, they conducted a content analysis doon sa research nila. Um, it's about um, content marketing strategies of Facebook post sa isang uh, Facebook page, which is in Davao Food Guide. Um, it is it is a Facebook page wherein it promotes um, different restaurants or pubs here in Davao City or in Davao Region. So. Yung study nila, they analyze what are the content marketing na ginamit ng Facebook, uh, Facebook page or the Davao Food Guide when they promoted the restaurants here in Davao City, yung uh, partners nila na restaurants. So that's an example of document analysis since um, it's a content analysis. They um, retrieve uh, mga 
um, public documents. Uh, it's considered as public documents or public records na kasi it is uh, those posts were posted sa isang uh, public domain which is ang Facebook. The next is interview. So aside from content analysis through retrieving and gathering documents, you can also gather your research data through interviews. Okay, an interview is a conversation for gathering information. A research interview involves an interviewer who coordinates the process of the conversation and asks questions, and an interviewee who responds to those questions. Interviews can be conducted face-to-face -face or over the telephone. The internet is also emerging as a, as a tool for interviewing. The interview, the researcher will uh, serve as the interviewer while the research participants or research respondents will serve as the interviewee. So the interviewer or the researchers will ask questions, then the interviewee will respond to those questions, meaning the interviewee should give answers that are appropriate to the questions being thrown by the interviewer. So it could, uh, it could be used in various forms. It could be through face-to-face, -face, through telephone, through written as what uh, you're doing, the Google form. Okay lang, okay lang yan siya, uh, conducting a written interview. Um, it could be by group or um, by individual, meaning one ba, uh, your interviewee is just one person or by group siya. We say by group, it's um, focus group discussions, ganun. Okay, interviews are an appropriate method when there is a need to collect in-depth information on people's opinions, thoughts, experiences, and feelings. Interviews are useful when the topic of inquiry relates to issues that require complex questioning and considerable probing. So if your research data needs a thorough uh, investigation, so kailangan um, substantial yung data ninyo, it's very important that uh, you need to gather in-depth information. Kung ang um, yung research data ninyo, will be coming from um, people based on their experience or thoughts or feelings, thus you need interview. You need to probe them, you need to throw follow-up questions depending on the need of the study. So interviews are useful kapag ganitong classing study. Okay, an interview schedule is basically a list containing a set of structured questions that have been prepared to serve as a guide for interviewers, researchers, and investigators in collecting information or data about a specific topic or issue. The schedule will be used by interviewer who will fill in the questions with the answers received during the actual interview. Uh, interview schedule, um, basically, this is the plan, whole plan in the in interviewing your research participants or the interviewee. So it contains the questions, whether it's structured or non uh, semi-structured, um, the people that you need to interview, the flow of interview, and the things, how you're going to um, totally the interview or record the interview. Then we have focus group interviews. Our interviews you conduct with a group of participants to collect a variety of information. These interviews can be as small as four participants and sometimes as large as 10. So, but uh, recommended keeping a focus group interview between four and eight participants so that um, the, the person will record, document, or um, transcribe uh, what's being transpired during the interview can be I know can be recorded. So the focus group interviews um, when you interview more than one person. So by group yung pag interview. We also have life history interviewing. It is a qualitative method of data collection where people are asked to document their life over a period of time. It is a personal account of their life in their own words and using their own personal timelines. Itong life history interviewing, 
um, merong specific timeline that uh, you need to document. So, depende siya based on the kind of research that you are investigating or conducting. So, basically, si life history, it's about the story of the life of the person that you are investigating or conducting a research. So, depende siya kung what, uh, what specific timeline dun sa life niya. What, uh, what uh, time yung gusto niyong i-record sa kanilang personal account. Then, there are three types of interview. Interviews can be designed differently depending on the needs being addressed in the information. They can be grouped into three types. Okay, there's the structured, say my structured and unstructured. Say structured interviews. In a structured interview, the interviewer asks a set of standard predetermined questions about particular topics in specific order. The respondents need to select their answers from a list of options. The interviewer may provide clarification on some questions. Structured interviews are typically used Excuse me. Structured interviews are typically used in surveys. Itong structured interviews, meaning um, your questions are already prepared. So the questions that you formulated in your instrument are the ones that can be only asked to your research participants or respondents. So basically, structured interviews, you already prepared all the questions. And you will stick to those questions. You will only ask questions based on your prepared instrument or questionnaire. So that's the structured interviews. So the same thing in your research. Um, the way or the technique that you are using right now for your research is interview. And the type of interview is structured interviews because um, you prepared. There's the predetermined questions in your research instrument. Then we also have semi-structured interviews. In a semi-structured interview, the interviewer uses a set of predetermined questions and the respondents answer in their own words. Some interviewers use a topic guide that serves as a checklist to ensure that all respondents provide information on the same topics. The interviewer can probe areas based on the respondent's answer or ask some supplementary questions for clarification. Okay. Semi-structured interviews are useful when there is a need to collect in-depth information in a systematic manner from a number of respondents or interviewees. Uh, for example, teachers, community leaders. In semi-structured interviews, um, you have a list of already prepared questions. So you have questionnaire. But in the event that you will need to prove uh, further to your, uh, your research respondents or research participants. Thus, you may ask questions that are not predetermined in your survey questionnaire or um, um, interview questionnaire. So meaning you can give or you can ask follow-up questions to your interviewees. But you have to make sure that the follow-up questions are related or relevant to the topics that you are dealing with in your research. Meaning, the questions should also be um, related to your already prepared or predetermined questions. So that's semi-structured interviews. Meaning there's um, a planned or prepared or predetermined set of questions. And then by that, you can ask um, follow-up questions that are not in your that are not found in your survey questionnaire, but you have to make sure that the questions that uh, you will fall, uh, ask um, follow-up questions related sa dito sa inyong topic. Then we have unstructured interviews. In an unstructured interview, the interviewer has no specific guidelines, restrictions, predetermined questions, or list of options. The interviewer asks a few broad questions to engage the respondent in an open, informal, and spontaneous discussion. 
The interviewer also probes with further questions and or explores inconsistencies to gather more in-depth information on the topic. Unstructured interviews are particularly useful for getting stories behind respondents' experiences or when there is little information about the topic. So in, uh, dito sa unstructured interviews, um, it is a free flow type of interview. So very open, this is informal, and the, the conversation is spontaneous, meaning you will just throw questions, um, whatever comes into your mind. So, depende siya in the event of the interview, what type of questions that you will ask. But you have to make sure that the questions that you will ask to your interviewers, interviewees will give answer to your uh, research questions or that will uh, the answers of the um, interviewees will suffice the research gap to study in you. So, basically, you will still prepare questions, but um, it's not like with um, structured and semi-structured. You will just prepare topics and then it's up to you how you're going to ask questions that will uh, give answers to those topics in your research. The next is observation. Observation, as the name implies, is a way of collecting data through observing. Observation data collection method is classified as a participatory study because the researcher has to immerse herself in a setting where her respondents, his or her respondents are while taking notes and or recording. Observation must be done in a quiet and inconspicuous manner. So observation, you need to immerse yourself during the conduct of the study. Uh, meaning, during the investigation, we need to act as part of the group. Like, for example, if you want to uh, observe the culture, the lifestyle of a particular tribe, meaning you need to live with the tribe people. You need to live with the village. You need to... Uh, you need to live with them in order to conduct or in order to gather um, genuine data, genuine observation. And it's very important that when you observe your participants or your respondents, do not intervene, do not interfere during the conduct. It's because there's a possibility that your presence can affect their behavior or can affect the way they answer um, when you uh, interview them, it's very important that your presence should not intervene or obstruct during the observation or that can influence or affect them. So we have what we call, although sa, sa validity of reliability and validity test pa niya noma, no, but in uh, conducting a study, it's very important that you need to consider yung Hawthorne effect. See, Hawthorne effect, for example, you are, uh, you are the research, uh, I am the researcher na lang. I'm the researcher. Then I'm conducting a uh, study sa inyo. Halimbawa, sa grade 11, Matthew. Then I'm, I'm observing you. Since you guys are fully aware that someone is observing you, then conscious kayo doon sa magiging behavior ninyo or conscious kayo when you answer questions doon sa uh, binigay sa inyo ng researcher. Then, there's a possibility that the way you answer, the way you behave can influence. I can be influenced by the researcher. Ma-influensyan na ako. Kamo, as, you, as my research participants or respondents like um, instead of um, getting your usual answer, um, the tendency is that it's because conscious mo na yung nag-observe, tarungo ninyo ang answer ang uh, kung sa mato ng questionnaire na bihatan sa inyo. So, basically, malahi ang usual result sa study. Thus, it's very important when a researcher observe a particular group of people, although 
he or she needs to immerse herself dito sa grupo, but you need to make sure na di maka-obstruct during sa observation. Then, there are types of observation. Observation as a data collection method can be structured or unstructured. In structured or systematic observation, data collection is conducted using specific variables and according to a predefined schedule. In structured, meaning you have a list of things that you need to um, observe doon sa inyong participants or respondents. So, depende what uh, what type of study that you are conducting. But you need to make sure in structure, you need to list down all the things that you need to observe doon sa participants or um, respondents in you. Dito naman sa unstructured observation, it's conducted in an open and free manner in a sense that there would be no predetermined variables or objectives. Dito sa unstructured observation, you have no definite plan what are the things that you're going to observe? You have no list. You have no schedule. But you will just record or document kung ano yung ma-observe ninyo. But you still have to make sure, even though unstructured, the data that you can gather on this type of observation will still can still uh, give answers doon sa inyong research questions, can suffice your research gap, can answer your statement of the problem. Then we also have physiological measures. The technique applied for physiological measures involves the collection of physical data from the subjects. It is considered more accurate and objective than other data collection methods. Some physiological measures, in there's definite measurement of um, gathering the data. Kaya alimbawa, uh, uh, when you measure the temperature, kailangan niyo thermometer. When you measure the height, so kailangan niyo mo og, um, instrument that can measure height. It could be uh, measure, uh, measuring scale like uh, so by pwede magamit. Like, uh, um, if you want to measure your the, uh, the weight of a person, so kailangan o uh, weighing scale. So there's um uh the kind of data that you can gather when it comes to using physiological measures are objective. Okay, so these are the types of measuring instrument. Now I so you can see my, my stethoscope, my uh thermometer, merong weighing scale. We also have psychological tests. Psychological testing is the administration of psychological tests, which are designed to be an objective and standardized measure of a sample of behavior. So the term sample of behavior refers to an individual's performance and tasks that have usually been prescribed be beforehand. The samples of behavior that make up a paper and pencil test. The most common type of test are a series of items. Itong psychological test, so basically it will test your um, psychological status or your psych. So basically your behavior, your personality, um, um, your emotional state, your emotional pattern, the psychological test. Performance of these items produce a test score. A score on a well-constructed test is believed to reflect a psychological construct such as achievement in school subject, in mga aptitude test, cognitive ability, aptitude, emotional functioning, personality, etc. So differences in test scores are thought to reflect individual differences in the construct the test is supposed to measure. The science behind psychological testing is psychometrics. Okay, itong psychological test, um, it will uh, differentiate dun sa individuals. Halimbawa, um, when you uh, answer say, uh, personality traits, your answers will determine what kind of uh, personality you're having. So, depende siya sa answers ninyo. So, itong sa personality, uh, personality test, meron siyang tinatawag na psychometrics. This is the type of um, 
measurement being used by experts in psychology in order to measure what is intended to measure. That's why sa mga uh, graduate uh, graduate ng psychology um, when they uh, uh, when they take examination exa uh, examination test or uh, for uh, professional licensure sa mga psychology uh, psychology graduates yung test nila is psychometrician psychometrics ang ginagamit nila in order for them to be uh, professional or expert may license nila sa ganyan na field so psychometrics and yung ginagamit in order to measure um, different psychological tests okay okay uh, this is one of the prominent psychological tests being used um, in different institutions itong Rorschach ink blood test the Rorschach test is a psychological test in which subjects perceptions of ink blots are recorded and then analyzed using psychological interpretation complex algorithms or both some psychologists use this test to examine a person's personality characteristics and emotional functioning so this is an in, uh, ink block test. So uh, it is usually uh, used in a psychoneuro test. So um, itong ink block test, ginagamit siya in order to determine the personality type of the per uh, person, yung emotional functioning niya, psychological state. The, the process in conducting this kind of test that if I am the in, uh, person who will take the test, I will interpret to my ink blood. So, be, uh, for example, this one, I'm going to give my interpretation. Kung ano yung nakikita ko dito sa ink blood. So, based on my interpretation answer, experts will interpret yung interpretation score or answer score. So, from that interpretation, Experts can deduce kung ano yung personality type ko or kung ano yung uh, imemeasure nila. Then we also have thematic a perception test. Thematic a perception test or TAT is a projective measure intended to evaluate a person's patterns of thought, attitudes, observational capacity, and emotional response to ambiguous test materials. In the case of EAP, the ambiguous materials consist of a set of cards to portray human figures in a variety of settings and situations. The subject is asked to tell the examiner a story about each card that includes the following elements. The event shown in the picture that has led up to it, what the characters in the picture are feeling and thinking, and the outcome of the event. So, itong thematic a perception test, um, you will give your interpretation. The same with ink blood test, but the difference is that they have different instruments. It, sa ink blood test, so basically, ink blood ang imong i-interpret. But in thematic a perception, um, there are human figures. You will give stories. You will interpret the characters based on their images, based on their uh, facial expressions. Depende kung saan yung pag-interpret. So this is um, thematic a perception. We'll give stories, what's the setting, what's the context, what's the background, based on your own interpretation. Kung ano yung nakikita ninyo. So basically, we have uh, different interpretation. Since different yung interpretation, um, experts can deduce na different yung personalities uh, ng takers ng test. Then we have Myers-Briggs type indicator. This is one of the uh, most popularly used um, personality tests. The Myers-Briggs type indicator or MBTI is an introspective self-report questionnaire with the purpose of indicating different psychological preferences in how people perceive the world around them and make decisions. The original versions of the MBTI were constructed by two Americans, Catherine Cook Briggs and her daughter, Isabel Briggs Myers. 
The MBTI is based on the conceptual theory proposed by Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung, who had speculated that people experience the world using four principal psychological functions, sensation, intuition, intuition feeling, and thinking. And that one of these four functions is dominant for a person most of the time. So itong sa Myers-Briggs test, uh, it is derived uh, from the study of Carl Jung. Carl Jung is another psychiatrist. Um, he's also prominent in, in this field, the field of psychology. So um, itong Myers-Briggs type indicator, based on ito four psychological functions. So depende kung unsa ang dominant sa isa ka tao. So these are the 16 types of personality according sa Myers-Briggs. We have the INTJ, INTP, ENTJ, ENTP, so on and so forth. So based on this one, pwede ka malabel or makategorize. If you are architect, ba, logician, commander, debater, depende kung unsa ang dominant sa imo ha. So in my case, ano ko? I already took this test, INFP or into uh give me any the mediator ito, poetic, kind, altruistic. Although it doesn't necessarily mean na these are my only characteristics or attributes or uh qualities. It's just these are the things that are dominant in me, according to Meyer Briggs test. So actually, you can also take this test. Uh, there are available uh, test questionnaires sa uh, internet. Free lang po siya. So if you are interested, you can actually take the test for free. So if you are INFP, just like me, you know, sensitive, creative, idealistic, perceptive, caring, loyal, value inner harmony, personal growth, focus on dreams and possibilities. So if you are ISFP, um, or gentle, sensitive, nurturing, helpful, meron dito sa ano sa according to Myers uh, Myers Briggs type indicator. Yung personality types natin is like spectrum. Meaning, meron siyang possibility na uh, kapareho ng attributes sa other personality types. It's just it's a matter of kung ano yung dominant sa inyo. Then, other psychological tests. Minnesota, uh, we have Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Test or MMPI and Edwards Personal Preference schedule. Itong uh, MMPI, it is a psychological test that assesses the personality traits and psychopathology. So it is primarily intended to test people who are suspected of having mga minta, uh, mental illness or may, may issues with mental health. Ito namang Edwards Personal Preference Schedule, um, it is an individualized type of test that will determine or measure the motives, intentions, and needs of a person. So basically, itong psychological test, when you take this type of test, there's no right or wrong answer. Walang mali or tama. Kasi it's about your perceptions, it's about your opinion, how you see yourself, how you uh, view yourself, how you view other people, how you perceive the situation, there's no wrong or right answer in this. So it's just a matter of interpretation based on this test. So there are a lot of available tests, uh, psychological tests, depende kung ano yung measure nila and depende kung ano yung basis ng uh, proponent ng test. Kaya halimbawa sa personality test ng uh, Myers-Briggs, there are also other personality traits tests. Halimbawa, yung five-factor model or OCEAN, another uh, another personality test, different from Myers-Briggs. Pero different yung tinetest nila. Uh, different facet ng personality. 
then the questionnaire. The questionnaire is a research instrument consisting of a series of questions for the purpose of gathering information from respondents. Questionnaires can be thought of as a kind of written interview. They can be carried out face-to-face -face by telephone or computer or phone. So basically, the questionnaire, it's a list consisting of questions intended to ask in order to answer your research questions or suffice the research gap in the study. So the same with interview. The questionnaire um, structured and structured uh, it can be structured or unstructured. So we say structured provide possible answers and respondents just have to select from them. Unstructured do not provide options and respondents are free to give whatever answer they want. So meaning structured questionnaires, merong intended questions, prepared questions, pero meron siyang alternatives. There are choices, answers. So the uh, respondents or participants will just choose their answer based on the alternatives provided by the questionnaire. Dito naman sa unstructured questionnaires, walang options. Meaning, as a participant or respondent, I have the freedom to answer what I want. Okay. The relationship of the review of related literature to the questionnaire. The review of related literature and studies must have sufficient information and data to enable the researcher to thoroughly understand the variables being investigated in the study. The descriptive indicator gathered from different sources are called indicators for a specific variable, and they are used in making sure that the content of the questionnaire is valid. A valid indicator must be supported by previous studies done by experts. So this is one of the reasons why um, uh, I want you to enrich your related literature because your related literature can give you the ideas what kind of answers that you will ask to your research participants how are going to construct your answers and what are the aspects that you need to ask to your research participants or respondents because as what i've always mentioned your uh, research questionnaire should answer your statement of the problem and your literature can help you construct your questions. Okay, halimbawa, dun sa study, sa questionnaire ninyo, interview questionnaire ninyo, um, I indicated doon na nag-base siya sa theoretical framework ninyo or sa theory base. Halimbawa, you have five indicators. So, basically, yung number of questions ninyo, meron ding five indicators, uh, five questions. Kasi, yung questions ninyo should be in line with your theory base. Kasi yung analysis ninyo doon magbibase. Then these are the types of questions. We have yes or no type, recognition type, completion type, coding type, subjective type, and combination type. You see yes or no type, um, there are only two options in the type of question. You just have to answer yes or no. Nothing more, nothing less. It's so it's yes or no. Then we have recognition type, meaning um, you need to recognize your answer based on the given choices or alternative. Meaning my question, then my predetermined answers. You just have to uh, recognize what's the appropriate answer based on the question. Then we have completion type. Say completion type, uh, there are statements, then you need to uh, complete those statements, meaning it's like um, fill in the blank type of test. Uh, you need to complete the statement. Then you have also have coding type. When you say coding type, um, it's a scaling type of uh, question. So if the question will ask you to, um, based on your own, uh, based on your experience, scale one to 10, depends on question or statement. Pwede yun siya ng mga Likert scale, ganun. Then, subjective type. Say, subjective type, it's um, open-ended question, meaning um, based doon sa opinion 
ng respondents. And we have the combination type, combination of any of these types of questions. Okay, limbawa, this is an example of yes or no question. Okay, do you believe that death penalty is ever justified? Yes or no. So, depende sa inyo. This is a yes or no type. Then, this is a recognition type. What is your highest educational attainment? Please put a check mark before your reply. So, based on these question, uh, options, ano yung answer ninyo? So, you only have three options. Elementary graduate pa ka, high school graduate, or college graduate. Ano? Then, this is an example of um, completion type. Meaning, my statement, then you complete the statement. When I see a mis misbehaving student, I will, as a teacher, then you complete the statement. Then, this is um, coding type. Okay, in a scale of 1 to 10, how will you rate the skills of your manager? Or, yung mga like scale na uh, 1 to 5, like um, disagree ka ba? Uh, strongly disagree? Disagree? Neutral? Or neither agree nor disagree? Agree or strongly agree? Yung mga Likert scale. Mga, uh, uh, five point Likert scale or seven point Likert scale. Then this is an example of um, subjective type. What do you think of the horrible, horrible effects of pollution? Sub, uh, subjective type kasi open-ended siya. Meaning you can answer as much as you want. Kasi walang restriction. You have no alternatives or you have no choices. It's an open-ended question. Then wordings of questions. So this is how you need, uh, you're going to construct or how you language your question. State questions in an affirmative rather than a negative manner. So when you ask questions, especially sa mga research instruments sa, sa, tawagani, sa mga quantitative study, questions should be in affirmative manner or positive dapat siya. So depende na lang na kung pila ang rate sa, um, sa inyong respondents. Avoid ambiguous questions, those which contain words like many, Always, usually few, kasi non-countable, mago din siya na mga words, uh, mga adverbs, non-countable. So there's no definite or specific number in order to measure these types of uh, adverbs. Kaya ambiguous siya. So you need to avoid using this one. Avoid double negation questions. Like for example, don't you disagree with the idea that minors be not allowed to drink anymore? Kasi say, don't you disagree? Don't is already a negative tone. Then it's being paired with the word disagree. Then it's all it's already negative. Meaning, um, it can confuse the uh, the interviewees or the one who will answer the questions. Masag uh, predetermined na ang answer. Masay don't you disagree murag murag gina influencehan kaniya na ang answer dapat nimo is di ba ka mo disagree na ano murag the implication is that you you should agree doon sa um, opinion ng researcher then it's um uh, tawag ani kanang you are giving suggestions. Very suggestive type siya nga question. Avoid double barrel questions like asking two questions and one question. So, um, it's very important that you need to ask one question at a time. Kasi it, uh, there's possibility that the research, uh, research respondents or participants cannot fully answer, give you um, definite answer doon sa questions ninyo. Okay, alimbawa, will you be happy joining the division quiz B and be given additional examinations afterwards? So, the, uh, there are two uh, implications. D 
dito sa type of questions ito and they are not related. So it's very important when you give follow-up questions, kailangan related siya doon sa first question ninyo. Okay, just uh, in this case, about division quiz B and additional examinations are different, different situations. So you need to avoid this type of uh, wordings and questions. Then scales, commonly used in an instrument. We have Likert scale. It's a rating scale often found on survey forms that measures how people feel about something. Okay, it includes a series of questions that you ask people to answer. And ideally, five to seven balanced responses. It could be a five-point Likert scale or seven-point Likert scale. So you can choose from these responses. Then it often comes with a neutral midpoint. Kalimbawa. So itong statements like the quality of the brand, the prices we offer, speed of service we provide, customer so support offered. So these type of questions being asked kung gaano ka satisfied in customer, meaning it's about uh, customer satisfaction. So as a respondent sa ganito na test, you're going to rate kung very unsatisfied ba, unsatisfied, Neutral, satisfied, or very satisfied. So it depends upon the uh, answer of the respondent. So this is an example of Likert scale. This type of Likert scale is five-point Likert scale since there are five options or five points that you can rate. Naman, evaluate our brand in terms of the following statements. Mention strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, or strongly agree. The next is the semantic differential. Semantic differential scale is a seven-point rating scale used to derive the respondent's attitude towards the given object or event by asking him to select an appropriate position a scale between two bipolar adjectives such as warm or cold, powerful or weak, etc. Itong semen, uh, semantic differential, different siya sa Likert scale kasi you're dealing with numbers dito sa Likert scale. Okay, halimbawa itong, let's say, very unsatisfied, one, unsatisfied, two, neutral, three, satisfied, four, very satisfied, five. Dito sa semantic difference, uh, differential scale, you're dealing with words and these words are adjectives. So depending are going to describe or um, define. Halimbawa, the respondent might be asked to rate the following five attributes of shoppers stop by choosing position on the scale between the adjectives that best describe what really the shoppers stop means to him. Halimbawa, organized or unorganized. So meron siyang detail po ninyo. How organized or how unorganized? How cold or how warm? How modern or how old-fashioned? So, depende. The respondent will place a mark anywhere between the two extreme adjectives representing his attitude towards the object. Such as in above example, the shopper stop is evaluated as organized, cold, modern, reliable, and simple. So, basically, you will deal with words when it comes to um, using this type of scaling. Sometimes the negative adjectives are placed on the right and sometimes on the left side of the scale. This is done to control the tendency of the respondents, especially those with either very positive or negative attitudes, to mark the right or left hand sides of the scale without reading the label. So meron ding psychology, uh, psychology behind the arrangement of the words. Paano sila i-place doon sa uh, questionnaire? Halimbawa, inaccessible or totally accessible, rude or courteous, caring or unsympathetic. So, i-rate nila. Another one. Hmm. Hmm. 
so that's the end of our discussion. Okay, do you have questions or clarifications about our discussion? None, sir. Claro. Okay, by the way, um, next week na lang tayo mag-discuss. Kamo sa yung research. Mag-gather ninyo og data na ka-start na mo o distribute or disseminate sa inyong questions. Kas naka ano na mo inter uh, sa inyong participants, naka-reach out na mo. Mag-ask pa mi sir, kung sa iyo gagamit og mobile phones lang. Okay. Or ready na ang questionnaire. Okay. Sa inyo ha free ya. Sa inyo ha, Reniel, lisod ka ayaw. Nagkuhan po ko sa akong kuya, sir. Nakutaan na sa kung free ba ito sila, RV, kung itong lang yung friends niya. Ah, okay, more busy, man. Good. Okay. Nung lisod, I thought na ano mo yung ano, na ano mo yung you have in mind na or prospective research participants. Anong lisod? Ay, kulang pa. Anyway, kung kulang pa, inyuhang participants, okay lang man na unahon nanto ninyo nasa list ninyo. Follow up na lang kung mangita pa mo ano, uban. Pandungag sa inyong research participants. Kung kinsa itong available, unahan na lang ninyo o ka ng ano, hatag sa inyuhang uh, research uh, questionnaire. Sa inyuha, June Mar, wala pa nag-update sa kuha si Janeline. Kaya ako man ting maghatag sa ano sa inyong participants mag-send sa inyo ha. Anong wala pa siya nag-update? Ah sige sir, ingon na lang ako si sir. Okay, uh, eh, ano ha, i-update imong kagrupo. Okay sir. Para mas storya na ako ako ang kaila na digital marketer. As, uh, as soon as possible pag ano na mo pag gather na mo og sa inyong para maka-start na mo ano analyze sa inyong para maka-proceed na pud mo sing results and discussion kay Gamay na lang tag-time. So next week na lang ko mag... Wala, since wala pa mang pod mo kagather sa inyo ang research data, um, we'll discuss na lang next week. Kung manun lang sa ako, next, uh, tomorrow, we'll finish discussing about the validity and reliability test. Then next week, next meeting, we'll discuss the results and discussion. Okay, para maisa na lang na ako. Wala pa mang pod mo kagather di ay. Okay, so... Kung wala na may concerns... Questions, I think that's it. So, if you have follow-up questions, just shoot me a message. Okay? So, I'm going to end the conference meeting. Na ha.